Welcome to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. If you have any concerns, please get in contact with staff in the Year 12 team. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Episode 15, MacKillop College Principal, Mr Rory Kennedy. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr Andrew Exton. We're having another episode of the Mac Connection podcast today, and today we've got a special guest in our principal, Mr. Rory Kennedy. Rory, thanks for coming on board. I think the first question I'd like to ask you, as MacKillop celebrated the 50th year of its school, this year wouldn't have been the year that you were imagining. How have you, how have you sort of adjusted yourself with the hopes of the celebration and what it's actually been like. What have the successes and challenges been of MacKillop's 50th year from your perspective? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I think it's the acceptance that the 50 year celebration year um, is not what I anticipated it to be or anybody else for that matter. Um, all those <clears throat> events that we believed were going to make our year all those moments, those memories that were going to be created, uh, which were the celebratory memories, um, are not. The the memories that we've got uh, are not good memories of 2020. They're not a celebratory moment. It's not something that I'm going to look back and say uh, that for our 50th year, this was something that we were able to make memorable for the right reasons. It's, It's for the wrong reasons that um, things are what they are. And the cancellation of events, um, obviously for the students, is the greatest frustration that I've experienced. I think possibly in in my service to schools, I've not come across a more frustrating year where I know that the students have been disappointed to the extent that they have been. For the college, um, a milestone is being missed and it's a milestone that you um, won't be able to capture in 2020. We have to be inventive and find other ways as we move into the early part of next year to capture what we still can to remember what 50 years of Catholic education and where it is about. So, so, sad. so Mr Kennedy, I wonder, in the midst of the disappointment of the cancellation of events, we often talk about MacKillop being unique and it's got a unique culture, and, and I think that's true for all of us. What do you see as the successes of 2020 from a point of view of what we've dealt with and how we've dealt with it? Uh, I think what I've observed anyway from where I sit and remembering that when you're sitting in isolation, you're, you're getting things coming through and filtering through in really it's just being drip there to you. You're not getting it every day. But um, I think the thing that's impressed me most is that that students and staff have accepted that challenge that 2020 cannot and is not normal. Um, and, and the challenge that I've seen people overcome, I think everyone has a right this year to be angry. I think it's, um, I think they've got a right to be and to feel frustrated I feel that they are allowed to be disappointed. And yet what I've seen is that anger, that frustration and that disappointment being turned into uh, levels of resilience, which I didn't um, know that our students and staff would necessarily have, or even myself. Uh, I've been angry, I've been frustrated, <clears throat> and I've been particularly disappointed. And yet I think there's a resilience that I've seen in others that I've been able to draw strength from. And when I say resilience, I mean genuine resilience. Uh, I'm hearing that the students are getting on doing what they're doing and 
making the most of what they can, that they're prepared to put their head down and their tails up and uh, do the work that's required because they want to salvage the best of themselves um, out of 2020. So, you, yep, sorry, you go. I uh, go on, sorry. I was going to ask you, you've spent most of your time at school because that's where you need to be. I wonder if you find yourself wandering around the school. What, what do you miss most about school the way that it's meant to be as, you, as you're at school? What do you, what do you miss? Oh, look, there's no, there's, the simple answer are the students and staff. Uh, and I said this with our last time that we were in lockdown, that a school is not a school without its students. Um, put simply, I, I am here every day. I come in, I um, walk around the school. That's an everyday event. Uh, and what do I look at? <clears throat> I look at the, I try to find the positives of what's happening. And in a school without, without students and staff, what are the positives? And I look to see the major works that are happening in the school. Uh, every day, those major works, uh, that centres around the new library, uh, they're progressing. I see the minor works, all those small things that you like to get to at some point. I see the workers getting that, uh, those sorts of jobs done. Uh, but what I miss most is just those, those students who always say g'day to you. They always have a smile for you. They, they make you feel welcomed in your own school. Um, clearly, that's what you miss the most. And Mr. Kennedy, as a, maybe from a personal point of view, you're a father, you're a grandfather, and these restrictions impact on all of us. Have you found yourself <coughs> missing, have you found yourself missing those things that we would otherwise, you know, take for granted, those things that are just part of our normal routine? It's, it's one thing being the principal of a school, but it's also dealing with, you know, the challenges of living in lockdown. Have you found yourself being challenged, I suppose, about those things in terms of everyday living? Uh, look, indeed. I'm no different, though, to any other um, person. I, I find myself, uh, certainly as a, as a family man and with a, a three-year-old grandson who really is, the love of everyone um, in the family to not be able to spend time with him and to know that he's growing up in, and they grow up so quickly at that age and they're effectively losing a year where you just don't have that continuity with him. Uh, you can do what you do, you can zoom and you can do your FaceTimes and the like, it's not the same. So I've missed that. Uh, that's a very personal um, loss, but then I look to those other things of the interactions that you have with my colleagues, um, the, the the family dinners, those moments, the the lack of connectedness with working out with people and and finding time for for the extended family. But that's everybody. Everybody's there. What I try to look for. Um, inside of it are some of the silver linings that this whole, uh, particularly level four shutdown has brought. You, you've got to look for the silver linings that sit within it, both big and small silver linings. Um, we, we know that MacKillop is a Josephite school and we know that <coughs> St Mary of the Cross MacKillop plays an important role in this. And I, I feel personally that, you know, faith or looking for inspiration or looking for guidance. It might sound airy-fairy in some ways, but during this period, I think there is a, a greater sense of needing to find inspiration. I wonder if the words and the teachings and the experiences of Mary McKillop have in some ways assisted you in decision-making and, and the things that you're doing. It's, it seems to me it's a bit more real than maybe what we have maybe thought it was in other years? Yeah, look, the difference here with for our school is that we, we call ourselves a Josephite school. We, we talk of Mary uh, and the charism of the, the Josephites and Mary McKillop, and this is when it comes into its own. And look, for every student, for every staff member, it's different. Their faith is at different levels, and it's, for me, 
the connections that I have with my AJAS principals, we've become quite close through this crisis. Uh, the crisis has brought about our need to, to phone each other, to connect with each other in our, make, in our decision making of what we are going to do for this matter or for that matter. And that wouldn't have happened um, if we hadn't had the, the charism that our schools share. We would have been doing it in isolation. Uh, every meeting I attend and for every gathering we have, we go to Mary's readings and we still go to her quotes and we use those words that she had um, for us as insp for our inspiration. And it grounds us, it just takes us back to what are we here for as a college? We're a, we're a Catholic school. We're not a secular school, we're, you know, we're not independent, we're uh, a Catholic college and we go back to our faith each time. Crisis does that though. Whenever you have a crisis, we pray, we, we look to something beyond what we understand and um, we're in a crisis now. So I found myself drawing on both our Mary, um, McKillop Carrison and Jesus for those moments where I do need something to help decision making. And finally, Mr. Kennedy, you talked about um, the buildings and for the time that I've been at McKillop, we've always been a school focused on a positive future, about, you know, having an impact, about changing, about adapting and about growing and, and ultimately <coughs> being positive about where we're going. And I think a building is a symbol of that as, long, as well as so many other things that we do. I just wonder, finally, a message to the students and to the parents, and I suppose particularly our senior students who have had it in, in a very challenging way with the uncertainty around the end of the year, what, what words would you give to, to them to, to be positive and hopeful about the future? Yeah, look, uh, to, to our different levels of our students, so I'm gonna focus more on the year 12 students, if I may, and I guess, to them, just as I felt, and you can you can take this on board or not as a Year 12 student, uh, it, it's okay to feel ripped off. Um, I, I believe you should feel ripped off. Um, I think you've got a question that you should all be asking. Why did it have to be our year, our Year 12, that this happened in? Why did it have to be 2020? And I think inside of that, that anger, that frustration and that disappointment, <coughs> um, I think it's okay for you to feel that. It's what you do with it. And as a cohort, you will be talked about for years to come. We will talk about the 2020 um, Year 12 McKillop students. And I'd like to think that what we'll say is how resilient were they? How tough were they? They did not let the virus win. They stood up, they looked after each other, and they shared what they needed to share to get through it together. I'd love to be at the end of this year applauding our Year 12 students, all of our students, but certainly our Year 12s, for not letting this beat them. That they showed that yes, this is what these, this is the the deal that we've got. We can't change what we can't change, but we work the problem and we come out at the end of the year with the best possible outcomes for ourselves. And then we'll celebrate. We will celebrate. Well, thank you, Mr. Kennedy, for, for coming on and sharing those things. And I think um, the one thing that I've got from this is that we'll enjoy, all enjoy the small things, getting off the bus, wandering through the college, going down to La Mercy. We'll enjoy that connection. And hopefully it is sooner rather than later. And with that, um, best wishes to you and best wishes to all our students and our community and um, we look forward to being able to reconnect and celebrate as you've said at the end of this period of stage 4 lockdown as we go into 2024. So thank you very much. That brings us to the end of this episode. A reminder, if you do need any help, if you have any queries, questions or concerns, please contact a member of the Year 12 team. Be kind and look after yourself.